Hello everyone. Um, uh, this talk is based on a joint work with my advisor Michael Mitzelmacher. In this work, we study dynamic algorithms for LIS. Uh, so let me start by defining the problem formally. Uh, in this problem, we have an array of size n. Every element has some number, and the goal is to find a subset of these numbers that is increasing. So for instance, for the sequence you can see on the screen, um, this is one potential solution. All of these yellow cells, the values are increasing. And this happens to be the largest. So the LIS for this sequence is equal to 7. There's a famous solution for LIS, which is actually very simple. It's called patient sorting, which solves the LIS in uh, time n log n. In this solution, we introduce an array. Um, I'm going to denote it by B. This, this is going to be the solution array for us. Um, this array is designed in a way that B of i, or the ith element of the array, gives us the smallest x, such that there is an increasing subsequence of size i ending at x. We start with an empty input array, and we add the elements one by one. Every time an element is added, um, we update the solution array, and we show that we can do that in time log n. All right, I'm going to explain this algorithm to you with an example. So as I said in the beginning, we don't have any elements in our array. Now the first element of the array comes. We're going to do a binary search on B. We find the first index of B, such that the value of that index is at least 5. And we simply replace that uh, element with 5. Then we do the same thing for the rest of the elements. So when the next element comes, this time the value is equal to 1. We again do a binary search. This time we find that b of 1 is equal to 5. So we replace 5 by 1. And then we move on to the third element of the array. So this is basically it. Every time an element arrives, we do a binary search. And um, this gives us a solution array. In the end, we have the solution. And we basically need to find the largest i such that b of i is not infinity. In this case, it's equal to 7, which means that uh, the size of the longest increase in subsequence is equal to 7. To recap, um, patient sorting is a very simple solution for LIS. It's very clean and easy to implement. And it also has applications to other settings. There are separate works for streaming LIS or MPC LIS. And in all of these works with some variants of patient sorting, we can find a solution um, with desired amount. But there is a big drawback, which is basically the focus of this work. If you want to design a dynamic algorithm, patient sorting is probably not a good choice because it's solving the problem sequentially and if something happens in the middle of this sequence then you basically need to compute the solution from scratch for instance uh, we know that for this sequence the solution is seven now let's say we remove three of the elements if you want to use patient sorting all you can do is to go back to before any of the removals happened and beginning from then um, add the remaining elements of the array. And everyone takes time log n, so in the worst case, you may spend time n log n, which is not good because we would like to get sublinear time solution. Um, so the setting is the following. Um, in the beginning, we, we have an empty array. At every point in time, some operation comes, and we have to process that operation um, with a small runtime. One operation is element addition. At any point of the sequence, we add one new element. The other one is element removal, which is the same thing except that we remove the element. The third one, which is kind of a dummy operation, is element substitution. I, I call it dummy because if you figure out a way to handle the first two operations, then with the same solution, we can handle this one. So we can, we can ignore this one, just focus on the first two. Obviously, the goal is to maintain the value of LIS. Um, 
it would be great to get exact solution, but um, sometimes it's impossible. So we also accept approximate solution. Um, so for previous work, there's not much to say. Um, for one thing, if we use patient sorting, then we can solve LIS for a special case where all of the operations are happening at the end of the array. That only takes time login and we can get exact solution. The problem becomes very challenging if, if we don't have any restriction for that. So if, if all of the operations can happen at any point position of the array, then patient sorting definitely doesn't give us a solution. Uh, there's a work by Chen Chu and Pinsker that study this problem, and they give some solution, um, which is not quite what we want, but, but it gives some improvement over the trivial solution. So the runtime is R, where R is the size of the solution. And if, if the size of the solution is sublinear, then their update time is sublinear. But in the worst case, um, the size of the solution could be as large as n, in which case the runtime or update time is going to be as large as n log n. OK, so here is a quick look at our solution. Um, the main result is um, a constant factor approximation with runtime n to the epsilon. Um, this works basically for any constant epsilon. For um, We can bring down the runtime to n to the epsilon, but there's a trade-off. So the approximation factor is 1 over epsilon to the O of 1 over epsilon. If, if epsilon is a smaller, then the approximation factor gets larger. And uh, obviously, the dependence is exponential. That's the main result, and I'm going to focus on that. But uh, there is a side result that gets 1 plus epsilon approximation in time root n. That's a very simple algorithm. I'll, I'll explain that too. Um, the ones that I'm, that I'm going to skip in this talk are the last two results. Um, so the third one is for a special case. We call it LIS plus. In this problem, we only have element addition. We don't remove anything. And we show that we can get log n approximation in time log n cube. The last one is for the complementary problem, which is called DTM, or distance to monotonicity. Um, distance to monotonicity is n minus LIS. Um, so basically, if, if you want to get exact solution, this, these two problems are the same. LIS and you know, the solution for LIS gives you the solution for distance to monotonicity. For proximal solutions, the problems become you know, different. This is similar to many other complementary problems. For instance, for maximum matching, you can get two approximation, but uh, for vertex cover, it's not easy to get two approximation. Uh, all right, so for DTM, we get one plus epsilon approximation in time log n squared. And uh, if you compare that result to LIS, you can see that this is much, much stronger. And um, this is actually not very surprising. Uh, in all of the previous work, uh, such as the streaming or MPC or the sequential settings, we know that DTM is easier to solve in comparison to LIS. So I'll begin with a warm up. I'll show you how we can uh, get runtime root 10 by just losing 1 plus epsilon in the approximation. Um, so the algorithm is building on previous work that gets exact solution in time O of R when the solution is bounded by R which is great if the solution size is bounded by root 10. The only part that we need to um, take care of is when the solution size is large, at least larger than root 10. So for that, we do the following. We first compute the solution in time n log n. Um, let's say the solution size is r. For epsilon r steps, we keep reporting the same solution. If you do the math, it turns out that since we are computing the solution once, so it takes time n log n, and you're using the same output for omega of r operations, then amortize the runtime is going to be n over r, which is good if r is larger than root 10. Now, to put things in perspective, we have two algorithms. One is good when r is bounded by root 10. The other one is good when r is larger than root 10. So intuitively, if we combine these two algorithms, we're going to get the desired amount. But um, there is one challenge that we have to overcome. 
And the question is, when do we switch between the two algorithms? Um, so it may seem easy to just define one threshold and solve the problem, but that may not work. Uh, if we just define one threshold, and if the adversary knows the threshold, he can go back and forth across the threshold, and this, this gives us a bad run. Um, so to resolve this issue, we introduce a technique which is just what we want here. And we show that using this technique, we can easily get runtime root M. Um, so we call it block-based algorithm. A block-based algorithm uh, starts with an array of size N. It is allowed to do a pre-processing of time F of N. Uh, a block-based algorithm is only responsible for G of N operations. So after G of N operations, our algorithm terminates. And we allow a runtime of h of n for answering every query. Um, so we prove the following reduction. We show that if we design a block-based algorithm with parameters f, g, h, then we can use this and get a dynamic algorithm with worst case update time h of n plus f of n over g of n. So going back to the question, um, we, we first do a pre-processing of time n log n to compute the solution. If the solution is uh, bounded by root n over epsilon, we use the first algorithm. Because the number of operations is root n, so the solution is going to remain within the same size, so the overall runtime is going to be root n uh, in every step. If the solution is large, we use the second algorithm. Um, because the solution size is at least root n over epsilon, then we know that after root n operation, we only lose a factor of at most 1 plus epsilon. And the update time is going to be O of 1. So if you combine these two algorithms, the runtime is going to be h of n plus f of n over g of n. In both cases, it's going to be bounded by root n. Now, so far we discussed some trivial techniques. Um, there were some details involved, but the ideas were simple. Here is the part where the more clever ideas come by. Um, in order to improve the runtime down to n to the epsilon, um, we use a technique that we call it grid packing. Uh, this is a completely combinatorial problem. And at first, it, it doesn't seem to be related to LIS. Um, but after I tell you what the technique is, I'll, I'll show you that there is a beautiful connection between grid packing and LIS. So um, you can think of grid packing as a game between us and an adversary. The game is played on an m times m table. Um, we are going to put some segments on this table. Every segment is going to cover a bunch of consecutive cells in a row or in a column. Um, we call two segments to be non-conflicting if one of them is above the other one and completely to the right of that, that segment. For instance, um, these two segments, these are conflicting because they share a row. But these two are non-conflicting because um, the yellow one is completely on top and to the right of the red. There are two goals that we try to achieve in this game. Uh, the first goal is to minimize the number of segments that cover every cell. So we don't have any restriction on the number of segments. They, they could be overlapping. We don't have any restrictions uh, on that either. But we don't want too many segments to cover a single cell. So we want to minimize the maximum number of segments covering this cell. Uh, the second goal is a little bit more complicated. So after we put the segments, the adversary put numbers on, these on, on the cells of the table. So it's completely his choice to put what number on, on, on each cell. His score is going to be the heaviest path from bottom left to the top right. And the score we obtain is the maximum score we can collect by a bunch of non-conflicting segments. So for instance, in this case, um, the score of the adversary is going to be 12, which is shown by the blue path. And the score we get is going to be 9, which, is, uh, which we can get by the green and the blue segment. Um, it is not hard to see that our score is always smaller than the score of the adversary, 
but you would like to minimize the ratio. You want to minimize the ratio of the score the adversary gets over the score we get. Uh, so since there are two objectives that we would like to get, um, we can define a buy, buy criteria approximation. We say a solution is alpha beta approximation if it guarantees that no more than alpha segments cover every cell and the ratio between the score of the adversary over our score is always bounded by beta no matter how he puts numbers on the cells. Um, so the question is what kind of approximation we can get in this game and we prove in the paper that we can get m to the kappa log m and o of 1 over kappa approximation for any small kappa. Um, I'm not going to go into details of this proof. Um, it has some combinatorial construction, but then I'll tell you how we can use this idea and, and give a better solution for longest increase in subsequence. The first step is to give a new representation for the problem. Instead of thinking of the input as a sequence, I'm going to think of input as a bunch of points on the 2D space. So for every element i of the sequence, let's say the value is a i, I'm going to put a point on the 2D plane with x coordinate i and y coordinate a i. This makes it easy to relate the problem to grid backing. Sort the points based on the x coordinates and divide them evenly into m parts. And do the same thing for the y coordinates. Sort them based on y coordinates, draw m lines that, that evenly divide the points. This way, we're going to have a grid. And in every row or every column of this grid, we're going to have at most n over m points. Now I'm going to make a useful observation. Let's say we use a solution of grid packing and we're going to weight every segment by the value of the LIS for the points that are covered by that segment. The maximum score we can get by a bunch of non-conflicting segments is a constant factor approximation for the LIS. And so to prove this, let's imagine there is this adversary that fixes one longest increase in subsequence and then the number he puts on every cell is equal to the contribution of that cell to the longest increase in subsequence. This implies that the heaviest path from bottom left to the top right is exactly equal to the value of LIS. On the other hand, if you focus on a segment, the total sum of the numbers that, is, that are covered by this segment is definitely a lower bound on the LIS of the points covered by that segment which means that if we use the LIS for every segment, and then if we find the maximum score we can get with non-conflicting segments, that's going to be at least a constant factor of the overall, uh, of the score of the heaviest path from bottom left to the top right, which is equal to LIS. This gives us a clear path for designing dynamic algorithms for LIS. Just make the grid, um, use the LIS for the value of every segment. Whenever something changes, we just need to update the value for the segments that cover that cell. So one thing to notice here is that the total number of points that um, are covered by any segment is bounded by n over m. So when we are computing or updating the solution for a segment, we can do that in sublinear time. The runtime is going to be n over m. The other property that we are using from grid packing is that you know, the number of segments that cover a particular cell is a small. Um, basically, for a fixed kappa, it's going to be m to the kappa log m. And this is a very small number. So if you take this and multiply it by the runtime for updating every segment, the overall runtime is going to still be sublinear. This is one cost we are paying. There is another cost for computing the optimal non-conflicting set of segments. That is based on dp, and the runtime is equal to the number of segments, which is m to the 2 plus kappa log m. And all of these costs are sublinear. So basically, if you use this technique, then we can update the solution in sublinear time. Let's do the math for runtime. 
Um, again, we're going to use block-based algorithms. In the pre-processing phase, we construct a grid. The size is n to the one-third times n to the one-third. And the runtime for this part is n log n because we just need to sort the points. For answering each query, we can do that in time n to the two-third plus kappa because in every row and every column, we have at most n to the two-third points. So updating the solution for every segment takes time n to the two-third. And because we have multiple segments, then it, the, in total, it's going to be n to the two-third plus kappa. Finally, we set g of n equal to n to the one-third, mainly because we want to make sure that f of n over g of n is bounded by o of n to the two-third. Uh, so if you do the math, then the runtime of my algorithm is going to be n to the two-third plus kappa, and the approximation factor is constant. So um, this gives me an algorithm. It's actually worse than the previous algorithm, because instead of 1 plus epsilon, we are using constant. And instead of runtime root 10, we are going to have n to the two-third plus kappa. However, there is a clear advantage for this algorithm it enables us to recurse on the same idea. So previously, when something changed for a segment, I computed the solution from scratch. But instead of this, I can use the same algorithm. I can recurse on the same idea and improve the runtime. So this gets a little bit messy. I just tell you what kind of a solution we can get with this technique. We can bring down the runtime down to n to the epsilon by recursing on the same idea of 1 over epsilon times. Of course, that comes at the expense of a larger approximation factor, in which case it's 1 over epsilon to the power of O of 1 over epsilon. So formally, the solution we get is the following. For any constant epsilon greater than 0, there's a dynamic algorithm for LIS with runtime O of n to the epsilon times some polylog factors. And the approximation factor is constant, which has exponential dependence on 1 over epsilon. So I'm almost done. I'll just bring one slide to recap what I said. So in this work, we give sublinear time algorithms for LIS. Our main result gets constant approximation, and we can bring down the runtime to n to the epsilon for any constant epsilon. The main technique we give here is grid packing, which seems to be a very convenient tool for designing algorithms for LIS. Uh, in addition to the results you see, we also have some other results for the streaming setting. We, use, we show that grid packing gives us a stronger algorithm for streaming setting. And it seems to me that there is more to grid packing. Um, uh, it's quite possible that it gives us uh, more algorithms in the future. Um, there's also a bunch of questions that are left open. I think the most interesting one is if we can get exact solution. In this work, we give constant approximation, one plus epsilon approximation. But there is no evidence that any of these techniques can give us an exact solution. Also, there is a question of lower bound. Um, for LIS in general, there is a lower bound of n log n, which gives us a lower bound of log n for the dynamic setting. But as you can see, there is a big gap between log n and the results we are presenting in this work. So the gap is wide open, and it would be interesting to to give better lower bound. 